Another year in gaming and another round of remasters is on its way. Recently, EA has released the trailer for the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, essentially a remaster of the original Mass Effect trilogy, and this has many, many gamers extremely excited, including myself. Before we go any further, please be sure to hit the like button as it truly helps out the video. And if you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and also hit the bell notification icon as well. So as soon as a new video goes live, you will certainly be notified. All right, thank you so much. Let's jump right in. Remasters are fantastic in my opinion because it allows a new generation of gamers to experience some classic gaming moments without the eyesore of dated graphics. Additionally, it goes back to some of the earlier versions of a game and updates the controls, updates the graphics, updates all sorts of things that through the development of a trilogy, they realize mm, sometimes this works better than that and we understand where we were trying to go in the original, but let's be honest, this works better. So for gamers who are looking to get into the Mass Effect trilogy for the first time, here's what to expect. First off, what is Mass Effect? At the core level of gameplay and for the vast majority of the combat mechanics, Mass Effect is a third person cover shooter with squad mechanics. Now, what does all that mean? For the most part, you'll be playing as Commander Shepard, and this name is the last name of the character, so it allows the player to go through character creation as either gender and the dialogue still works. The camera will be in third person for the entirety of the game, just kind of over the shoulder, if you will. As you go about the battlefield, there'll be various objects that are, well, sometimes more obvious than others that they are planted there for you to crouch behind and shoot at the enemies. When you go into any of the active areas, be it for a mission or on patrol or general exploring, you'll bring with you two additional squad mates. And sometimes, you know, depending on how strategic you want to be, you are able to take control of these characters or you can actually issue them commands from a distance to coordinate some type of advanced tactic or attack. The setting of the game is definitely sci-fi, although there are aspects of mysticism thrown in. They are able to create your standard character classes, be it soldier or rogue, and while they're not explicitly called mages or magic users, the idea that at some point humanity discovered, quote, element zero, end quote, or as they call it, Ezo, they are able to infuse this new element within their body tissue and use what is called biotics, which in game is, it's magic. It's basically magic. Additionally, this takes place across the entire Milky Way galaxy, not just the Sol system, so you'll be traveling out much farther than just Mars or Jupiter. You'll be heading out into all the arms of the Milky Way galaxy as a whole. So that's a pleasant difference for most sci-fi games. Next is what to expect. Now this game was originally developed by BioWare and Mass Effect 1 was developed prior to EA's acquisition of BioWare. What does that mean? There will be a heavy, heavy, emphasis on storytelling and character building and world building. There is a codex fit within the game where it explains in-game lore and concepts and definitions and, and everything else that you may want to know about the people or characters or anything else within the game. There will be the appropriate level of RPG mechanics. As you progress through the game, you will be defeating enemies, completing quests, gaining experience points, and upgrading your abilities. Again, these abilities they're, these abilities will range from, well, your basic RPG archetypes. The soldier type characters will have advanced you know, weapons tactics, and the biotics will be able to move things with telekinesis, and you'll have an engineer who's able to construct a turret or use some other special ability that's based in technology. There's nothing that really stands out in my opinion, but they all make it work within the context of the universe. And finally, 
character relationships will be very heavy as well. So not just building the universe itself, not just the world building within the game, but the inter-character relationships will play a very central role. For example, when you get into the later two games within the trilogy, you will have loyalty quests for your other squad mates, meaning that they have their own personal journey that they're trying to work through, and you have to help them see that to conclusion so that their mind is clear and free once you go into the final battle. Your relationship with the characters will play pretty significant parts in the overall storytelling, and the choices that you make will affect them and the future games. For example, in the first Mass Effect, there will be times where your decision will determine whether or not a character actually lives to be playable later on or even in the next game. Yeah, these are not just like, oh, they're going to be put out of commission for a little bit. These are permadeaths. If you make the wrong choice, this character will not exist in the next game. There are ways for the story to continue, and the writers have put that in there. But if you make the wrong decision, certain characters will not see you at the end of the trilogy. And in Mass Effect 1, you will come to a decision, and you'll know when this decision comes, that one of your squad mates will die. There will be a point, and you'll know it when you see it, that you need to choose. And the person that you choose to save will continue on in the next games. And the person that you leave, that's the end of their story. And finally, it's a remaster. So it's not just a reissue, it's not just an up-res, it's a remaster of the game trilogy. So of course, certain things have changed. The first and most unfortunate, actually, thing that has changed is due to corrupted data, the Sentinel DLC will not be included. I don't know how a company of this size could lose data that permanently or that significant, but alas, it happened. Unfortunately, the Sentinel DLC for Mass Effect 1 will not be included in the Legendary Edition remaster of the trilogy. Other updates include general gameplay. So, as I mentioned earlier, Mass Effect 1 was developed prior to the acquisition into EA, when BioWare was still an independent studio. The difference in combat mechanics from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2 is staggering. In Mass Effect 1, it was very heavily dependent on group tactics and firearms. Once EA had acquired BioWare, they were able to speed up the combat immensely. Rather than having skills and special abilities have a 30 or even 40 second cooldown time before you could use them again, it was dropped into single digits. And depending on your loadout, you may even be able to cast them within a couple of seconds of each other. There are also other miscellaneous updates and upgrades, but their main objective is to basically update and modernize what the old system should have been from the beginning. And finally, there will be no multiplayer with the Legendary Edition. Personally, I never played Mass Effect for the multiplayer. I mean, sure, it's more Mass Effect and more running and gunning against the alien hordes, and that's all good and all, and I mean, it is a lot of fun, but Mass Effect's multiplayer is essentially horde mode over and over and over again. You get a different enemy type on a different map. There's a handful of varying objectives, but it's essentially fight off waves upon waves of enemies and then make it out of the combat map alive. There really isn't much more variation outside of that. And besides, you're getting three Mass Effect games with almost all of the DLCs included. There will be no shortage of content for you to work your way through. And that's all we have for this video. If you enjoyed, please remember to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any of our videos. For Game Insider Magazine, this is Hypersyntax. And there you have it.